uh, so first first of all thank you so much for those this seminar and meditation session uh, they've been just amazing and my, i've got a question which sorry i'm just a bit <laughs> uh surprised to be um speaking with you all of a sudden um so I've, I've been following the seminar for since the beginning and it's been really just i'm feel over i'm overflowing with gratitude for um you know for this opportunity to meditate um with you and i've, I've I'm a big fan of John's work. And so thank you, John, and thank you, Soren, for organizing this. Um, my question was about um, grief, um, as in losing someone that you love and how this can be, because oh, I've lost my dad um, last year, uh, the beginning of December, end of November, and uh, from vascular dementia, and I, I know, John, just because you said it publicly that you've lost, and also in your book that you lost your dad, also from uh, Alzheimer, which is similar disease. Um, and I'm just having a lot of questions. How do you can, how can you keep that love for those people you've lost? Um, obviously, they are no, no longer in your present in present moment, and they can no longer be uh, ever in the present moment. Um, so how to keep that love I, and and about the grieving process, I don't know how to really articulate my questions, but um, articulating it quite beautifully. And um, so, uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm kind of don't I know you said that you, you have to ask if you can ask the question, you can answer it. And I've been thinking about it for days. And um, and I've, I've, I can't really yeah. just, I, I don't know how, you know, how can you grieve the people you've loved? Um, how does that work with, with mindfulness and, and with being in the present moment and keeping that love? Sometimes, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, you, you're in the grieving process and sometimes you think about that person and you, I'm overflowing with, with sadness and, and you can be with the sadness, but it's just keeping that link with that when parent in that case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's a beautiful question, and since we almost everybody is born of pain, uh, it's in, inevitable that at a point we're going to lose parents, uh, unless they lose us first, which no parent ever wants. So this is uh, the human condition. And of course, the COVID-19 virus, I mean, we're losing the frail, the elderly, the, the people at highest risk, many of whom are older, uh, even if they have dementia or Alzheimer's or anything else, it's like, they, you know, this is the human condition uh, unfolding. So, and I understand that you said you think about other all the time and you're, you're grieving, overwhelmed, sadness. I'm wondering whether in addition to the thinking, other things are not going on at the same time. You're also feeling other. Uh, that's different from thinking. Uh, there may be more than just sadness. There may be, uh, I experienced with myself, it just happened the other day. I got a kind of a, a feeling for my, for, of, of some way in which mother related to something or other. And I felt it in myself. I felt the kind of like, he was me in that moment. And I was him in that moment. And there's a certain way in which Feel like he he's alive in me in some way. And I don't want to just be sad about having gone because soon I'm going to be gone. So the question is, can we also can we love the sadness? Can we love the memories, the ones and the not good ones, the grief, 
and hold all in awareness and then as Zorba did, dance with it or at least uh, play with it so that uh, we're celebrating who that person was. And in that sense, something about them, we don't have language for this, but their spirit or their, you know, their inheritance. Uh, it, it gets transmitted in a certain way to us and they would not want us to just be walking around sad time and depressed because, or even driving ourselves crazy with thoughts about it. But the mindfulness practice says deeply into it and see if there's not more than just thinking. If it's not just the story that you're telling you about other or about how you are, there may be something much more interesting going on that has more to do with you who and your true nature then you may be realizing when you just stay in the thought store narrative of it in the thinking about it and so that's where i would say the opening lies or you know the sort of gateway or the doorway to uh, some kind of mm, recognition of the mystery of losing people we love and it's a part of the condition, but also shaping us when we're willing to put the welcome out, even for grief and sadness, and let it do us rather than us being perpetually uh, driving it, so to speak, with our thinking and our and our emotion that we don't look at, that we just feel some sense oppressed by, and wish would go away, or or just go in endless circles. And so that's where the healing potential lies in really paying close attention to all of these arisings in the mind and in the heart and in memory. And I wish you not luck with it, but a lot of fun because it should be a lot. And, 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 and joyful in that sense, because we've all inherited some, even if we had very, very difficult challenges with our parents. And even if they may yeah. not have ever understood who we were, that is very true in many, many cases. And it's extremely so. sad. But they've also gifted us with something that is similar to that moment of recognition when the Buddha hold up, held up the flower and everybody went into thinking and what does he mean and why didn't he give a talk and what's this flower about? And why didn't he choose the other flower? And thinking, thinking, thinking. But Mahapa, he saw, understood, not with thinking, but ah, this moment, silence, flower, form, emptiness, whatever it is, everybody will understand it differently, but a kind of aha moment, and you smile. And it's a smile of recognition, not the smile of, oh, I figured out what you mean because that's just more thinking. And you and your dad can have that same relationship even if he's not here anymore. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Francois. You. Where were you calling from? Are you calling? I'm calling from Glasgow in Scotland. Ah, wonderful. I'm, I'm not Scottish originally, but I've moved there. I've made it my home. Glasgow is a wonderful and very interesting city. Thank you. I hope you'll come. Yeah, I was there haven't. not. I was there maybe ten years ago, but uh, there are some wonderful people doing mindfulness in in Scotland and and in Borough and Glasgow. Uh, Al uh, Wilson is being one, and and there's a kind of, I think it's called Mindfulness Scotland or mindful. It's, and it's a kind of a, I don't remember what you call it, a charity. Uh -huh. And there's some wonderful people there. You might want to check them out. If I definitely will. Definitely will. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so much.